Embrace Artificial Intelligence. This one, you may have heard about it, maybe not. Friend, it is here to stay. It is real. And it's kind of scary. Artificial intelligence may not replace you, but it should assist you. So HubSpot says that video has the highest ROI of any media by far. And Adobe says that the average user now watches 19 hours of video content per week. So I'm so excited because in this Think Media podcast, I'm going to be breaking down my 2023 YouTube trends and predictions for creators and business owners. And I've got 10 of them. And this is going to be not really just like could happen far out there predictions, but there's going to be some tactical strategy in this episode. So buckle your seatbelt because we're really going to go deep and unpack a lot of actionable insights so you can get more views, get more subscribers and grow your channel this year. But today's episode is brought to you by Think Media Sale. We're still doing 75% off of our YouTube starter kit and our niche finder course. All of that's in the show notes and I'll tell you a little bit more about that later. But let's dive right into number one, which is go all in on vertical video. So HubSpot says that short form video will see the most growth in 2023. And I think that we can all agree with that sentiment. YouTube shorts, Instagram reels, TikTok, Facebook reels, Pinterest vertical video. Yes, I was on a trip to Israel and, uh, one of the creators on the trip with me showed me his Pinterest account. And he said, Hey, I made $13,000 in the Pinterest vertical video beta program. And I was absolutely shocked. I was like, Pinterest is a place where you pin recipes. What do you mean they're doing video now? Essentially reels. And so vertical video is blowing up and it's time to go all in. It is the most effective and it has the highest return on investment. This is what a lot of the data in my predictions and trends are pulled from Adobe, HubSpot, top marketing firms with a lot of research behind them. And when they measure the return on investment, the ROI of vertical video, what they're measuring is the fact of how hard is it to create and how much reach can you get, how many views, and then how much business can you drive or results. And so vertical video is technically the easiest to create, and it has the most opportunity for virality. So <clears throat> ultimately, investing in vertical video is really smart. Adobe said short form video accounts for 80% of all mobile data traffic right now. And short form video is also good for your brand. You can produce more content in less time, plus viewers are more likely to engage with shorter video that gets straight to the point. So when you're doing short form right, YouTube shorts, or you're producing vertical videos that you're, place, you're posting multiple places, uh, my real estate agent um, and real estate investor friend of mine, Anton, is short form video has allowed him to enter the content game. He hasn't really cracked the code on live streaming. He doesn't really make want to make long form, but he's using just his phone, no fancy microphone. He's creating vertical videos and he's posting them as YouTube shorts. He's posting them as TikToks. Facebook Reels and Instagram Reels. And he's like, it's crazy. The ROI is already coming in and they're not super hard to create. The constraints are helpful because it's vertical in less than 60 seconds. I'm able to also post it multiple places. And so ultimately, investing in short form is a big deal. And if you're not subscribed to the Think Media podcast yet on YouTube or audio, wherever you listen to it, definitely subscribe because we're going to be bringing you more content about vertical video, YouTube shorts all year long. But uh, one of the tips that I don't necessarily agree with, although it's worth stating here on number one, is Adobe said in 2023, brands need to keep their video content to 10 minutes or less. Now, I don't agree with that because we've seen, especially on YouTube, there actually being a huge opportunity for really long content, two hours, two and a half, three hours. We'll touch on that later. But I do agree with it in the sentiment of a attention spans are shortening. And when possible, if you can trim the fluff, short form video is shortening attention spans. And I think that the expectation on longer form video we should take note. So unless the content needs to be longer and there's a purpose for it, when in doubt, trim it down, shorten your content. That's a huge trend. 
And one of the predictions, number one, is vertical video. It's going to be the most growth. It's here to stay. Let's go to number two. Master the eight-second mindset. So getting attention fast is more important than ever. And one of the terms, even from some of the employees at Google, is the rising demand for snackable content. Now, I did this as a whole separate point because while this might sound similar to vertical video as being short form snackable content, the eight second mindset applies to everything. It applies to your longer form videos. It applies to taking your hooks more seriously than ever before. Now, by the way, some YouTube short stats, YouTube shorts now has 1.5 billion monthly active users and sees more than 30 billion daily views making it a big opportunity for advertisers. And that's a uh, think with Google quote. So snackable content, shorts is rising, um, but also thinking about grabbing people's attention. So a tip here is people in 2023 are not interested in short or long intros. We've been talking about this a lot though. I think this is not a new trend, but it's like, your intro should be less than five seconds, possibly one to two seconds. Ours here at Think Media is, you gotta just press record. That's it. And I have it on a soundboard right next to me on my Rode uh, Podcaster, but that's the whole intro. You gotta just press record with a camera noise. So people, they wanna get straight to the point. The way you should be opening up a video podcast, a short, a reel should get straight to the point. Your video should get straight to the point. We got to trim the fluff. And so mastering the eight second mindset, the people who win on YouTube, the people who win on social media are going to master the eight second mindset. Attention spans are shorter and don't just apply that to short form content, apply that to all of your content. Number three, start your video podcast. So Adobe said the great podcasting boom has already happened, but the sector is still growing every year. In fact, US consumers listen, listen to 15 billion hours of podcasts in 2021. Podcasts are also an incredibly effective way to drive sales as 60% of listeners report searching for a product after hearing about it on a podcast. So podcasts in audio are already a major trend, but I think even deeper than that, if you haven't heard yet, a document leaked from Alphabet, which is the parent company of Google and YouTube talking about their plans for podcasting. They hired a full-time executive to oversee podcasting at YouTube. You can go to youtube.com forward slash podcasts and see a page aggregating video podcasts. And other stats showed us that actually YouTube is the largest podcasting platform, meaning it actually gets more listens, aka watches, but listening time than Apple and Spotify which makes sense because if it's just the JRE clips or the Logan Paul impulsive show or H3H3 H3 podcast or Patrick Bet David Valuetainment, Lewis Howe School of Greatness, all these different podcasts, a lot of people go to YouTube to listen to them and YouTube is infinitely bigger than Spotify and Apple in terms of podcast listening. So all that to say is that the intelligent YouTube creator is gonna be thinking about starting a video podcast. Now they may pull in RSS feeds to YouTube for the audio side, but we say video podcast here at Think Media because of the opportunity to not just be on YouTube and have it be searchable, but also and discoverable and clips from it, but also that you can distribute it across audio. And this is why a couple of years ago, we started the Think Media podcast and this trend just continues to rise. It's not too late to get in the game. It's not too late to start a video podcast. We will be talking more about that this year a lot, whether you should start a separate channel keep it on your main channel, all the different strategies with it. Omar el Takori is kind of a resident Think Media expert on video podcasting. We'll be bringing him on the show. But number three is start your video podcast. Number four, embrace artificial intelligence. This one, you may have heard about it, maybe not. You might think it's hype. You might think it's weird. Friend, it is here to stay. It is real and it's kind of scary. Embrace artificial intelligence means that every smart YouTube creator, every business owner is going to realize a couple things. One, artificial intelligence may not replace you, but it should assist you. It may not replace one of your team members, but it should 
be embraced by every one of your team members. So if you haven't gone to chat GTP yet, which is at openai.com, we'll put it in the show notes. And there's some good YouTube videos out there. It's pretty scary. You can go to chat GPT and you could say, write me a script for a YouTube video comparing the Sony ZV-1 and the Canon M50. What's shocking is it'll write you like a 501 word script with the megapixel count, with the flip out features, like incredible detail. Its conclusions may be wrong about which one's superior or whatever, comparing them. After it finishes writing, you could say, can you make it longer? It'll add more detail. You could also say, do this in a chatty voice. You can give more distinctions to it. And so I encourage you as homework after this podcast or or just something to open up on another screen, it's free. You could go to openai.com, sign up and start playing with this tool. But as far as like writing scripts and is it going to replace the quality that a human can do? I don't believe it will, but it's potentially going to be able to help you save 70% of your time doing the heavy lifting on the script. Then you go on and add your voice, but it goes deeper. Number four is embrace artificial intelligence. VidIQ, if they haven't dropped it yet publicly, already has a description tool. So you just write what your video is about, the kind of title or just the basic keyword, long tail keyword phrase that your video covers. And it'll write you a two, three, four sentence or three paragraph short, but like keyword rich, optimized human voice description for your YouTube video, just so it better indexes in Google. And it's a description of what you're about to talk about. You can change it really quick. It happens in a second. And if you don't have vidIQ, um, you can check that out at vidIQ.com forward slash think. There's a whole suite of tools that vidIQ gives you. They also have their AI title generation tool. They're using AI to help you with daily video ideas, but it goes deeper. There's a software called gilacloud.com and it'll help you generate videos from news content, social posts, live sports events, and statistical data in minutes. And so it's AI. There's AI video editors and AI is also in things like Adobe Premiere. There's an AI color match tool. There's a morph cut tool. This might all sound a little bit overwhelming, but a couple things you need to hear. First of all, take a deep breath. Second of all, realize we only have probably about three to six months left before the machines kill us. So we might as well live it up Why? why we have time. And then third of all, realize that artificial intelligence is here to stay. And you got to skate to where the puck is going, not even to where it is. It's time to get educated in 2023 about how these tools can help you go further faster, about how they could be added to your workflow, about how they could be integrated into your workflow. I really actually don't think they're going to replace as much as we as we think. However, I would argue they'd say, okay, is AI going to make my job irrelevant? It could. But the, the reason it'll make your job irrelevant and you'll get fired is if you're not using AI, because AI can make you 20, 30, 40, 60% more effective. The person who doesn't learn the new tools is going to be at the mercy of the person who does and maintains their job because they double their productivity because robots are working for them. And the skill set to develop is the ability to ask better questions to still be a visionary and be able to vis uh, visualize the final product, the final YouTube video that you want to make. And really, the skill set to direct is you're going to be more the symphony director. So you're the conductor at the symphony. So you might be filming the video yourself, but you directed ChatGPT to help you write the script. You modified the script a little bit. You did an AI thumbnail generation. The thumbnail of this podcast on YouTube is an AI version of me. And so you, but we still had to creatively think through, okay, what was the best one? We didn't just randomly, there was some really, Lenza did some terrible um, AI version. It didn't even look like me, my hands growing all weird. I did, a, I did a carousel, my Instagram of it. You still have to be the DJ. You have to be the conductor of the symphony you still have to be thoughtful in terms of your description, but instead of you taking 20 minutes to write your description, you're taking two seconds to have vidIQ write it for you, and then you're taking one minute to proofread it. You just saved yourself 19 minutes. So number four is embrace artificial intelligence and um, as uncomfortable that, as that may make you feel, change is hard. It might feel weird. It's here to stay, and uh, 
something to lean into. All right, number five, adopt the media company mindset, trends and predictions. You are a media company. The brands that succeed, the businesses that succeed, and even the solo creators that succeed are solo creators who stop dabbling and they start dominating and take the mindset that I am a media company. So you are a media company. Adobe said it this way, you aren't just a brand, you're a media company and an influencer too. So you shouldn't be treating content creation as, or you should be treating content creation as a separate wing of your business with its own revenue generating opportunities. So I know a lot of our community here on the Think Media podcast, you want to go part-time or full-time on YouTube as a creator, as a personal brand. Great. You're a media company. So you stop thinking like a solo creator and a solopreneur, and you think about how am I building a media company? If only it is you as the conductor CEO of the media company, VidIQ works for you, ChatGPT works for you, VidChops works for you on some video editing. You have a, a personal assistant, an admin assistant that's a VA eventually. You're still the boss, you're still the CEO, and you're still thinking bigger. But especially if you're a business owner, an entrepreneur, or a brand, you're not just the thing you do, you're also a media company. And by being a media company and a content company, you also have the opportunity to create new revenue generating opportunities. Like it actually, you can bolt on additional income streams. For the creator, the YouTube creator and influencer primarily, these are your own, these are your primary in income streams. But for the business, you becoming a media company, it's kind of like if you were a brick and mortar restaurant, you may not start a YouTube channel and actually drive more local sales or people coming to your restaurant because of the YouTube channel. What you may do is use your kitchen on the off hours with some lighting and a camera and you doing cooking videos to create a one, two, three, four, five thousand dollars a month in ad revenue cooking channel. That's an extra, that's pure profit besides your hustle because you already have the recipes and the ingredients and the restaurant. So you just added on a whole new advertising income stream because of creating YouTube videos and tapping into the ad revenue partner program. And then as you know, and again, we'll talk about all of this at length here on the Think Media Podcast. I encourage you as the new year starts and it's still kind of a slow time right now, go through our library and look at some of the titles and topics that stand out to you, especially about monetization. There's just so many revenue generating opportunities. The punchline is number five, adopt the media company mindset. And another point under this is one of the brands predicted that influencer marketing, this was like HubSpot, will continue to grow in high ROI. Now, it's an interesting time. The truth is that as we're kind of in this weird, somewhat recessionary period, you do have some, a lot of bigger influencers are saying that their brand deals are slowing down or getting canceled because brands and maybe big tech companies are being productive, protective of their ad spend. They're backing out of some brand deals. Now it's all subjective, true, but subjective because I'll tell you this, I think media, our brand deals have not slowed down. Brands have not been pulling back. We have not had canceled contracts, but it depends on the industry, I suppose. But here's what HubSpot predicted. Over one in four marketers currently leverage influencer marketing, and it offers the second highest ROI of any trend. So what, here's what they're talking about. For you, the YouTube creator, or the individual with the YouTube channel, only one out of four marketers, so the CMO of a company, are actually embracing influencer marketing. More will continue to embrace it. So if only 25% embrace it now, what happens when 50%, 75%, 100%? You're the beneficiary of that. Because more businesses that want to sponsor more creators just means there's more money in the system. And so the key for you, though, is I want to encourage you, think like a media company. Is your media kit ready? Are you positioned for brands to be able to reach out to you? Have you positioned yourself to be the beneficiary of small businesses and bigger businesses that want to work with you? The other prediction that Hootsuite and a, a Hootsuite article talked about is that small businesses will be teaming up with small creators because smaller businesses, you've everybody's seen ads of Squarespace. You're listening to a podcast, Purple Mattress. You're listening to, you know, NordVPN. We've seen that brand deal on YouTube videos, right? But small businesses will start embracing influencer marketing. Now we're in prediction territory. 
And I, and I would agree with this. So small businesses start embracing influencer marketing. You have a small channel. They see the opportunity to drive sales, drive sales to their e-commerce site, but you have to be findable. You also have to be on the offensive of finding these businesses. I think there's an opportunity to even consider working with smaller businesses in your local community, filming for them, making ads for them, biz dev with them, bring them on the show, collaborate with them. The mindset, here's number five, is adopt the media company mindset. You're the CEO. What is your, this is your brand deals, influencer, business partnerships division. You are partnering with businesses. You're attracting small businesses that want to hire you. You're thinking about your media kit. You're thinking about your pricing. You're thinking about your deliverables. I mean, I can highlight your product in a video. I can make a commercial for you. I could make a video of your local business. I could, like, you think about pitching yourself and think about the revenue opportunities in terms of influencer marketing and that was one trend that I wanted to highlight was that small businesses will be teaming up with small creators. So get ready for that and also be aggressive in building out your media company. And that's another theme we'll continue to talk about here. And one other piece of this was also that a prediction was long-term brand ambassadors. And I, we've been seeing this at Thick Media, six months to 12 month brand deals even two years, then one video and one ad placement. I think it's smart because it's more efficient. It's also smart that rather than just constantly being sold to the highest bidder, which we would never recommend, but it's not just ad spot spots or commercials. It's looking for like partnerships, long-term brand ambassadors. If you if if we know we love the product, like vidIQ, if we know we love the product and we use the product and the product continues to evolve and we can get behind it and we would wholeheartedly recommend it to our friends and family without being a brand partner with them, then they would make a great brand partner because we would recommend it anyways. And so that was one of that is one of our partners, really. And it's a brand deal, it's a brand sponsorship, but it's long term. And we are brand amb ambassadors for vidIQ. And it's a win, 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 win because we recommend it anyways. It's cool that we can work with them. We have an affiliate opportunity. We're also compensated on top of that. We integrate it into our content. It's across the board. This video is not even sponsored by vidIQ forward slash think, but I'm, I'm shouting that out or just letting you know about it just because we talk about them on an ongoing way. All right, so we have the next five tips, but uh, I hope you've been getting value and I'm curious which one did you like best, which one stands out to you most. Today's episode, as a reminder, is brought to you by thinkmediasale.com. There's a few more days left. I believe January 5th is the end of our 75% off sale on our YouTube starter kit and our niche finder course. Super great price. I think it's $47 right now. Huge discount. I mean, Niche Finder alone is normally a $200 program if you want to get dialed on your channel topic for 2023. Plus, you want to get our best bundle of downloadable templates for titles, our title guide, our video ideas list, our 51 money-making ideas guide, our thumbnail, create awesome thumbnails training, and all this different stuff. That's all in the starter kit. Those two things at a steep discount are ending soon. And so check out the show notes, thinkmediasale.com. Um, and if you want to start or grow a YouTube channel in 2023, if you're serious about growing your YouTube channel, definitely check that out. And let's get into number six. Number six, live streaming is here to stay. So this is not really a new trend or a new prediction, but here's what the stats say. According to one report, consumers spent around 548 billion hours streaming through mobile devices in 2021. And that was the newest stat that I found in regards to one, just it's a couple of years ago, so the numbers are higher. Two, that's just mobile devices. So we know this is huge in gaming, but this is also huge. We live stream all the time at Think Media. You may have already started to embrace live streaming. Um, are you considering embracing live streaming in this new year? Here's one of the reasons. Um, live streaming gives you the opportunity to connect deeper and it's real time. So it's really you. I want to encourage you to make sure you're subscribed because the next episode of the podcast is kind of the part two of this. And it's sort of a different angle on my trends and predictions. I think it's going to be one of the most important episodes I ever talk, uh, I share with you because it's three YouTube tips that if you ignore them, you'll regret it. And one of them is just on the need of vulnerability and transparency. We've seen so many like cryptocurrency rug pulls where people have been scammed, NFT scams from big influencers, clickbait, like people going for just like 
quick money, but dishonoring their audience or highly polished content creators that say one thing, but then something comes out that's not really, you know, who they are. So the thing with live streaming is it really just puts you out there. So there's a lot of reasons, but that's just one reason to highlight is that it connects deeper and it is real time. So it's really you. It's really hard to fake anything for over time on live streaming because you're just out there as opposed to the fact if you can hide behind editing or you can hide behind a filter, the power of live streaming is it really connects. And my point is one of the big trends, which we'll unpack much more in the bigger in the next episode is this idea of people overly polished content is just not going to win in 2023. More vulnerability, more authenticity, more real, more raw. And live stream is one of your opportunities to do that. I think also multi-streaming, and we talk about StreamYard a lot. I'm recording this podcast on StreamYard. Um, that's another one of our big partners because it just gets better and better. If you want to check it out, streamwiththink.com is 14 day trial. They just added perfect record. So I'm actually recording this video podcast at a higher quality. It captures to my hard drive first, gets uploaded to the cloud. Then I'm able to just send that link to an editor and boom, this podcast is off to the races, just recording it from home. So StreamYard is an incredible tool. Uh, but when streaming, which I'm just recording this, not live, but when streaming, you of course can not just go to YouTube, but you could go to multiple Facebook pages, Twitch, if you want to RTMP streams. So basically anywhere and you can multi-stream. So it's just an opportunity that live streaming is here to stay. And to maybe summarize this point, as we get ready for number seven, you also saw that YouTube evolved to now organize their content better. And if you haven't noticed on channels lately, they now have a videos tab, a shorts tab, and a live streaming tab. So my prediction for 2023 is that the savvy YouTube creator is going to be embracing all the different content formats strategically on brand for their channel, serving their audience, understanding their audience, but embracing the different content formats. I also want to encourage you, if that's overwhelming, you don't have to do them all at once. But as you move maybe from part-time to full-time, develop and sharpen your skills and get 1% better with every upload, you will see us modeling at Think Media that we're doing longer form video podcasts, we're doing YouTube shorts, we're doing live streams, we're doing edited videos of all kinds of different lengths. It's a, it's a multimedia format world in 2023. Number seven, join the SEO revival. SEO stands for search engine optimization. I would argue that SEO never went away. But what's been interesting about the last couple of years is that it's kind of been forgotten about. And a lot of people have thrown the baby out with the bathwater. Understandably, when it comes to YouTube, the shorts shelf, which is not search-based, is a place to go viral with shorts. The suggested and browse features traffic source on YouTube is the place to go viral, being recommended by YouTube. And a lot of people have ignored search engine optimization. But what's fascinating is I was just talking to one friend who said he was building a PC and he was looking at every part of his PC that he would look up to study was a YouTube short that ranked in search. I heard Gary Vaynerchuk talking about the opportunity of using, of ranking YouTube shorts. Now, our core program at Think Media, our main course is called Video Ranking Academy and our students have continuously seen success as of we with ranking videos and creating search-based or intent-based content. So of course, it's not just YouTube shorts. It's also long form video. It's also making your, your content discoverable and findable. It's also realizing that your videos can rank on Google. But here's some 2023 things to consider. One prediction was voice search tactics for SEO. Businesses are responding by changing how they frame information to answer readers' questions based on intent. Creators are opting for more conversational question and answer formats. This way, when consumers use voice search, they'll get high quality, accurate responses more quickly. So how you optimize, organize your content has an opportunity to get discovered as people are using voice search. And you need to be aware that people are saying, you know, hey, Google, hey, Alexa, hey, Siri. And I hope my phone doesn't come alive right now, but they're, they're saying that. And then the, how are they verbally framing what they're looking for? You have a, a chance to get discovered in that regard. Write for people before you write for search engines. So I think what we're seeing with the SEO revival is it's not SEO being revived the way it used to be done. 
you got to know the way it's done in a 2023 world. Yes, you want to understand keywords and you want to understand keyword phrases and you want to understand viewer psychology and all of the above. But the key is you also want to write for people before search engines. Another huge key to SEO in 2023 is you want to become an authority on the topic. So authority is one of the things that Google has always valued and Google owns YouTube. It's not talked about a lot, but channel authority matters on YouTube. So channel authority is that YouTube eventually figures out, oh, think media talks about cameras and tech a lot and people respond with that. Okay, if they just randomly post a gardening video, besides the fact that that would be disaligned with the viewers, then we're not an authority on that. So your goal is to strive to be the best resource on whatever topic you're discussing. And then know this, 79% of consumers care about content trustworthiness. So seek to go deeper in a place of authority when it comes to search engine optimization or video search engine optimization. And then also focus on your click-through rates and engagement metrics, which would be modern ways of what ranking means. Like on YouTube, it's CTR and ABD. On top though, of a good title, good thumbnail. And I know I'm throwing a lot at you. The summary of number seven. I mean, we got a year of amazing content for you, you know, lock and load to, to ride or die with the Think Media crew on the podcast. But SEO is not just here to stay, but it's really the SEO revival. Time codes and chapters on YouTube is a whole opportunity for ranking on the first page of Google in regards to key moments. There's a lot of stuff that we can go deeper on, on but uh, I want to give you the final points. Number eight, understanding audiences. The creator who wins in 2023 understands their audience the best. And so here's a couple of recommendations. Go beyond basic demographic information. It's crucial to know their interests and hobbies, how they like to shop, where they consume media, the online communities they are part of, the challenges they face, and the social causes they care about. Do you know that stuff about your audience? That might be worth rewinding this part of the podcast and to think about that again because uh, that's the kind of information that you want to know, not just demographics, but psychographics. Psychology, the creator who understands the viewer best wins. And Adobe suggests this, that empathy and human-focused content will win in 2023. So lean into relatability, emotions, and empathy. That's the key to building real connections with your followers. Nearly 95% of consumers are more loyal to brands that are transparent and genuine, and 75% would pay more to support genuine brands, Adobe found. Understand your audience. Empathize. Feel what they feel. Think about what are their problems and their ambitions. And the truth is, this is kind of marketing 101, but as we think about 2023 trends, like this is crucial now. Like you can't afford not to be in tune and in touch with what is keeping your ideal viewer up at night? What are their worries? What are their hopes? What are their fears? What are their problems? What are their ambitions? Are you speaking to those problems and those pain points? Are you empathizing and relating with where they are, where you're helping them go on your YouTube channel? Huge key to success in 2023. Number nine, e-commerce will continue to grow. Why is this a big opportunity? Because e-commerce is you as an online entrepreneur who's building a media company. This is your opportunity to monetize. Whether it's through affiliate marketing, an e-commerce sale needs to happen, which simply means an online sale. Whether it's you eventually creating your own products, that'll be e-commerce. Whether it's you partnering with DTC, direct-to-consumer brands, that's e-commerce. So for that brand to be able to afford to pay you, they need to have good sales. So if e-commerce is not growing, we're all in trouble in the creator economy, but it is growing. So here's the stats. According to a research completed by eMarketer, online retail sales will reach 6.51 trillion by 2023, with e-commerce websites taking up 22.3% of total retail sales. It might shock you that the number is that low. So they're saying that maybe by the end of the year, we're going to hit 22.3% of e-commerce when it comes to retail sales. But what that means is that really for everybody buying things, only two out of 10 are shopping in e-commerce. You might about spit out your coffee and fell out of your chair because you're like, Sean, I order everything online. What do you mean not shopping online at all? I mean, there's other things I buy, but as far as me being a part of the e-commerce game, I'm definitely in the two out of 10. I think what's important to notice is that eight out of 10 have not like really embraced e-commerce yet. But the amount of growth we've been seeing tells us this. Two years ago, only 17.8% of sales were made from online 
purchases. And so basically we're seeing double digit e-commerce growth. Now, put this in perspective. I've been doing this thing since 2010. I've been full-time since at the end of 2015, I was full-time freelancing in 2015, full-time in 2016, originally just from Amazon affiliate commissions off of e-commerce sales. And it might've been 11 or 12% back then of total e-commerce and I'm making a full-time living around with tens of thousands of other creators. Today, every number is multiplied, but here's the good news. We have, we're not even close to seeing the maturity of e-commerce, of video platforms. So Sean, summarize, I got you. The good news is, while it may feel like there's a lot of competition, and while it may feel like it's an uphill battle to grow your channel, and grow your income, this industry is just getting started. This next decade is gonna be the best decade on YouTube. If only two out of 10 now, by the end of the year, are shopping online, what happens when it's four out of 10, double these numbers, and your position now, building your media company, building your channel, positioning your brand, putting out good content, learning new skills, to be in front of the wave, so the wave of money comes crashing down upon you, and you just have more money than you know what to do with. I'm not trying to hype you up, I'm trying to give you data to just show you that you're still positioned at the early stages of an industry. The creator economy continues to grow, small businesses, only one out of four marketers are embracing influencer marketing. So again, what happens when it's two out of four, three out of four, and you're not just sitting on the sidelines, but you're actually in the game, taking action, leveling up your skills, learning and developing and positioning your brand, learning online marketing, learning online branding, understanding positioning, you're positioned to capitalize on e-commerce itself. And one of the things that's also interesting about this is just a more marketing term, is a new term that I, I read about called hybrid commerce. commerce. So what I'm also not insinuating, nor is anybody else, is that e-commerce is going to replace in-person commerce. Of course, there's certain things we still wanna go shop for. It's hard to buy candles online because you can't smell them. And so I think that the evolution of the online influencer, the online creator, partnering with a brand, getting a brand deal, maybe doing affiliate links, someone may be connecting with your content, but doing having an in-store experience, just something as far as a little bit of predictions and future casting. What hybrid commerce is talking about is decreased distinction between online and offline. That's sort of the evolution of the space. But all of that to say, e-commerce continues to explode in different nations. I know we have a global audience here on the Think Media Podcast, and thank you for being a part of our community from just around the world. And of course, not just in Canada or the US. E-commerce is a little bit further behind in certain areas, and growing more. I spoke in P Panama at an influencer conference once and got to talk to people who were like, man, it's still early here. Brands though are just starting to kind of wake up to what we're doing. Affiliate marketing is still developing. I think what you can be confident in is that you can bet on all of that still growing. You can bet on all of that being an opportunity that people are going to trend towards what has happened in the US. And whether it's one out of 10 shopping in e-commerce, then it's two out of 10, three out of 10, four out of 10. And you want to go all in now in 2023. So you could be positioned to ride the wave. I've got number 10 for you in just a second. We are uh, summarizing the episode number one. We're talking about 2023 YouTube trends and predictions. Which one do you like best? Which one are you going all in on? Number one, vertical video. Number two, master the eight second mindset. Number three, start your video podcast. Number four, embrace artificial intelligence. Number five, adopt a media company mindset. Number six, live streaming is here to stay. Number seven, join the SEO revival. Number eight, understand audiences beyond demographic information. Number nine, e-commerce will continue to grow. And we'll do number 10 in just a second, but I do want to encourage you, if you haven't subscribed to the Think Media Podcast, subscribe. And it means the world if you rate and review the podcast. If you're on audio, uh, leaving a review on Apple, it means the world to us. If you're on YouTube, drop a comment of where you're watching from and hit like. And maybe share this podcast with somebody who wants to learn YouTube in 2023, start to grow their channel, start a side hustle and monetize it because we're going to be bringing you the best content we've ever brought you this year. And we're so excited for it. But number 10 is invest in the skill of storytelling. In a 2023 world, and a lot of experts agree, the creators and business owners and entrepreneurs that win when it comes to creating content are going to master the skill of storytelling. Whether it's knowing how to tell a story in a YouTube short, whether it's knowing how to tell a story or hook the viewer's attention and how you stru structure a live stream, whether it's tying in stories 
to your content. You may have heard it said that facts tell, but stories sell. Sometimes we can be too feature driven in our content. We're talking about a lot of facts when what would really power up our content and make the connection is telling a story. Sometimes all we do is communicate facts and information when sometimes you can lose the viewer's attention if you tell a story. However, people connect with stories. And if you want someone to do more than just stop by your channel and engage on a surface level, but actually connect with you, mastering the art of weaving in stories, your story, illustrative stories into your content will help power up your content. That is a 25 part series in and of itself, but I, that was my number 10. And a lot of experts agreed on that as well. The content that understands storytelling is going to outperform the content that does it in a 2023 world.